Good morning. It's May 13th, 2024. Happy belated Mother's Day to any of you who were uh, out and about with your family yesterday. I hope you had a lovely day. Today we're going to go on to section two of When Your Child is Missing, the book produced by the Department of Justice. And this section has to do with law enforcement and searching. Section two. The search, understanding the work of law enforcement and volunteers, understanding the search. This gets argued with all the time. Nevertheless, these are best practices that are proven statistically to be the highest standard. While you will desperately want to help with the physical search, the best use of your energy will be to share information with investigators as soon as you get it. From remembering something, learning something new about your child's case, or simply connecting the dots regarding information you did not have before. Being available and being close to home or able to get there quickly if your child returns. Or, if you are needed by law enforcement, it is vitally important. The following checklist will help you understand what is happening and suggest ways to follow up if you believe the proper procedures are not being followed. And then, as we pointed out in the previous um, episode, these red bars are actually jump links. So, what more can you do to help? Ask your investigator what you can do to help them during the initial investigation. Ways you may be able to help include asking neighbors to share recent home security footage that may have captured images of your child, sending video clips showing your child's unique mannerisms, posting your child's missing flyer on neighborhood or other group social media sites, posting printed missing child flyers in places your child was last seen, monitoring and sharing current banking and credit card records, Talking with the PIO, Public Information Officer, about ways to increase media interest in your child's case. We'll talk a lot about that later on in a different section. Meeting with Victim Advocate and learn more about their work in Chapter 7. Don't pass the Victim Advocate offer up. Vet them if you're unsure, but don't pass up that help. Checklist. The first 48 hours, and we went through a lot of this in the first recording for Section 1, so I will not be reading it word for word. I will be pointing out things that are important. Uh, confirm if your law enforcement agency will use a local search and rescue team, an SAR team. The National Association for Search and Rescue, NASAR, not to be confused with NASCAR, just putting it out there. Their email address is info at nasar.org or 877-893-0702. Ask what types of searches are planned. Search, searches can include a variety of locations and approaches. Your case investigator can explain various searches that may involve areas where your child was last seen, your home and its surroundings, your child's school locker, neighborhood canvas, like a door-to-door -door thing, land or grid searches often used for fields, trash pickup or landfills, sea, water or air, roadblock canvases, business canvases, license plate tracking, GPS and cellular tracking. And I have bolded and highlighted these two to point out that they are different. Your cellular phone, wherever it pings in the areas, or your child's cellular phone, wherever it pings in the areas it has connected with a tower is one data set. A separate data set is GPS tracking in your phone or in a car or, a, you know, a standalone GPS um, locator beacon, those kinds of technologies, they're separate. They're two um, 
distinct databases. Please understand that. All right, let me not beat the horse to death. Geomapping and database searches to confirm locations of registered or RSOs in the area. Tracking or trailing dogs, such as bloodhounds, may be brought into the scene to help with the search. They can be valuable in tracking and following your child's scent in the air and on the ground, even if your child was carried in someone's arms or in a vehicle. If you follow Michelle After Dark, she talks about this all the time. How even if a child is being carried, which could be allegedly the case in Summer Wells' um, missing child case, where there were scent hits on single footprints, and it is speculated by the pub public that he was being carried, he is still shedding dead skin cells and hair, potentially hair uh, from her head. So, and the same thing with a vehicle. Um, there's going to be a scent pool for a period of time where a child got into or was put into a car. Ask law enforcement to keep you updated on what areas have been searched, who was present, and what was found. Ask law enforcement to keep you well, why did they do that twice? Second searches of the same area are often performed because they can yield information and leads that were previously missed. Make sure you feel confident the search effort is adequate and progressing as expected. If not, ask how improvements can be made. Keep lines of communication open and respectful. Agree on a daily time or regular cycle for your investigator to update you about search and investigative efforts. Don't be afraid to ask questions or air differences of opinion. Ahmad Riv Rivazvar recalls the detective making him feel like, quote, just another piece of evidence, close quote, during their investigation into the heinous crimes committed against his daughters. If you are not satisfied, speak up. This is information we covered in section one, but it's worth repeating. You have a right to know what is going on in your child's missing child investigation. Child abduction rapid response teams or CART teams, of which CARD teams are CART. Depending upon the circumstances, law enforcement may request help from one of the following rapid response teams that are trained and equipped to find missing children. These teams include local, regional, or state child abduction response teams, or CARTs. These are multi-jurisdictional teams composed of experienced law enforcement professionals who can deploy quickly. They have established roles, high-tech mobile command centers, and a network of specialized search resources from canine handlers to aerial search experts you can learn more at the email or the website address amberadvocate.org forward slash CART, C-A-R-T, resources. Nationally, the FBI's Child Abduction Rapid Deployment Team, or CARD with a D, teams are strategy, strategically located throughout the U.S. and deploy at the request of an FBI field office. CARD teams provide on the ground investigative, technical, analytical, and resource assistance ideal for complex cases. NCMEC's Team Adam consists of retired law enforcement professionals with years of experience at the federal, state, and local levels. NCMEC also provides technical assistance to agencies investigating long-term missing cases. Ask your officer for help accessing Team Adam support. You can actually go to missingkids.org and find the Team Adam information on your own if you would like to read it. Quote, you are going to survive this even if you don't want to. Nobody really thinks they will be in it for the long haul, close quote, and that is from Colleen Nick a parent of a missing child. 
after the initial steps are taken in the first 48 hours, investigators will shift gears into a longer search strategy. This does not mean the search for your child is less urgent, but rather that additional investigative processes and specialized resources will be used, will, will be incorporated to support and sustain the effort. When the search for a missing child becomes long-term, not all parents are emotionally or financially able to stay actively engaged in the process. They may need to ask others to take the lead. This is completely understandable. Whatever you decide is best. Here are some of the things that your family, friends, and volunteers can do. The checklist, the long-term search, discuss the plan and goals for the continued search, work with law enforcement to determine what role you and others can play in the long-term effort. Make sure goals and approaches and resources are clearly defined and understood. Schedule a regular visit with your investigator. Establish a schedule to review the case and share updates. Immediately provide law enforcement with new information that may impact the direction of the case. If developments call for an increase in the scope or complexity of an investigation, and you get the sense that your law enforcement team is becoming overwhelmed or under-resourced, don't be afraid to ask if the FBI or state police can help. Also, ask if NCMEC's Team Adam investigators can assist. Contact them at 800-THE-LOST and translate it into numerals. That's 800-843-5678. Ask to periodically discuss the investigative strategy and progress. These are things we've already gone over, so we're just going to go through them. Talk with law enforcement and the benefits or dangers of offering a reward for the safe return of your child. Read more about this aspect of the search in Offering Rewards section, Chapter 4, and we will go over that. If Crime Stop, find out if Crime Stoppers can be able to help. Crime Stoppers answers telephone calls 24-7, is skilled in how to intake tip information, provide color and anonymity, oh boy, provide color anonymity and work effectively with law enforcement. If Crime Stoppers is used in your child's case, you can share their toll-free number, 800-222-TIPS or translated into numerals, 800-222-8477. For calls about a reward, note, NCMEC will not provide reward information on its toll-free hotline, 1-800-THE-LOSS. For more information, visit crimestoppersusa.org forward slash contact us. Inquire about programs that help with tips and rewards for crime reporting. Ask your law enforcement agency and the prosecutor's office about other local, state, and regional or national programs that can be used to securely and reliably intake tips and offer rewards. I would be extremely careful about distributing too many avenues of entry. My top um, suggestion is your local police, whoever the lead detective is, their contact information. Crime Stoppers, if they're called in uh, with regard to tips and rewards. And beyond that, maybe you have a state clearinghouse. I think almost all states do, if not all. After that, I would be extremely careful about who you put in charge of both tips and rewards because tips should be going straight to the lead agency and rewards should be handled by a bank, not by ad hoc agencies. In the case of Crime Stoppers, they can be um, used to disseminate information, but a bank should be handling the reward funds with an escrow account. That way it's tracked, it's federally insured deposits, and the deposits can be refunded quickly should there be a reason, either a donor 
decides they don't want to support the reward effort anymore or the um, reward conditions are not met and donors need to have their donations returned. Very few circumstances would I do anything else. I was part of the Summer Wells Reward Fund public campaign. It was successful that mon the money was handled appropriately despite what detractors may say. And no one came forward to ask for their money back once the court was asked to decide if the funds should be turned over to the pre-designated agency, Child Advocacy in Tennessee. More than that, I can't tell you, this is based on my personal experience. It was a positive experience, despite what your detractors said. Done with that, let's move on. Use images and posters to sustain public awareness of your child's case. If your child remains missing for a year or more, use NCMEC's array of long-term missing case support services, which includes age progression, depictions of your child based on photos, and other physical information. These age progress images can be used in conjunction with original pictures in, the, in this case and can be shared on an updated poster, billboard, and other items to sustain public awareness and support of the ongoing investigation. Your child or your state missing child persons clearinghouse and or NCMEC can assist with poster creation and updates. Remember to consult with your case investigator before sharing any new information with the public to ensure it does not compromise the investigation. Chapter three contains a checklist items for working with media Use a notebook or written audio journal to document your feelings. And then again, my favorite thing to highlight. Use a notebook or written audio journal to document your feelings and discoveries as the case proceeds and review it periodically. Occasionally, a thought or passage will trigger a memory or give you new insight. It doesn't have to be written perfectly and it may provide useful information in the future. Using tip lines for leads. Law enforcement prefers to handle incoming tips about your child's missing cases via an internal tip line where calls are accepted 24 hours a day, seven days a week. The, they will use a specifically designated lead management system to track incoming information to investigate and see MEC provides a 24-7 hotline for receiving tips, but does not provide reward information about your case. Crime Stoppers also offers a 24-7 tip line and does use rewards, but its services are not available everywhere. Usually most major cities have a Crime Stoppers chapter. Never share your personal phone number or email address on your child's poster or web slash social media sites. Ask about the best numbers, emails, URLs, or QR codes to use on your child's missing poster before it is created. This will ensure that tips are received, processed, and investigated in a timely and organized manner. So, so important. Keep the information flow clean and accurate. Collaborating with law enforcement. When your child is missing, you and law enforcement become partners pursuing a common goal. And you always have to think of that in your mind, that you and law enforcement are partners, not adversaries. Finding your child, uh, common goal, finding your child. As partners, you both work to establish a relationship based on mutual respect, trust, and honesty. You do not have to agree on every detail but engaging in honest communication can alleviate or resolve many issues. Checklist, ensuring good communication. Do everything possible to eliminate your family as suspects. Can't stress that enough. Everything starts at home. Do everything that's asked of you. Be honest and forthcoming in your statements and answers. If at any time you do not feel supported in this regard, Seek assistance from your family advocate 
or NCMEC's Family Support Services. Be prepared for difficult, repetitive questions from investigators, as challenging as it may be. Try not to respond in a hostile or defensive manner to questions that seem personal or intrusive, even offensive. Investigators must ask difficult and sensitive questions to do their jobs effectively. If you believe that a cultural or language difference may affect your ability to work or communicate effectively, ask the law enforcement agency for assistance, an interpreter, liaison, advocate, and or mediator can help facilitate better understanding. Use the law enforcement's resources first before you go out and find a PR person or family spokesperson. Use law enforcement first. You're paying for that in your tax dollars. Insist that everyone close to your child be interviewed. Besides family members, ask friends, your child's boyfriend or girlfriend, neighbors, teachers, and coaches to cooperate in the investigative process. Just because you ask them to doesn't mean they will, but try and be as persuasive as possible. Leave the interviewing of your other children to law enforcement. Do not question them yourself. That doesn't mean you can't, if they bring up the distress of having a sibling missing, doesn't mean you can't talk to them. We're talking about interviewing here. For younger children, a law enforcement officer trained in child forensic interviewing should conduct those sessions. Many law enforcement agencies will have officers specially trained to interview children. Child advocacy centers may also have professionals able to help in this process. Allow law enforcement to coordinate with child advocacy center personnel if necessary. Ask for a child advocate to sit in on each interview with your missing child's siblings. Child advocates are especially trained staff and volunteers who support children involved in the criminal justice process. In addition to private child advocacy, child advocates, sorry, some states and muni municipal agencies have child advocates available, usually within the district attorney's office, the courts, or law enforcement agencies. Ask law enforcement for information about your local child advocate resources. You can also visit the National Children's Advocacy Center website to find a chapter in your state. If your child's sibling is very young, you may be asked to sit in on the interview. Do not be alarmed, however, if law enforcement needs to have a trained child forensic interviewer speak with your child or children alone. I would ask if there is a way for you to watch on camera or in an observation room if they put this stipulation about the child being interviewed alone on your children's interviews. I would not, personally, I would not allow my child to be interviewed no matter how old they are or how young they are without access to that interview in real time. That's my personal opinion. Be prepared for a constant law enforcement presence in your home. For the protection of you and your family, an officer may be stationed there around the clock. Your investigator or family advocate should help you understand why this is necessary. If your law enforcement agency does not have the resources to provide this type of security, ask for whatever security they can provide. Although law enforcement's presence may feel intrusive, welcome the officers who are there to help you with your child's case. Talk regularly with your primary law enforcement contact. Can't stress this enough. If they're not calling you, you call them. Be cordial, be polite, but insist on talking to them regularly. Law enforcement, let law enforcement know the best time of day to call you with new information. That's just courtesy. Communicate your expectations 
to learn about significant case developments from your law enforcement contacts, not from the media. Likewise, you and your family must honor law enforcement's request not to disclose certain information to the media. Need I cite examples? I don't think so. Not currently, anyway. Be prepared for predatory or prank calls, texts, or emails. And I will add to that predatory volunteers, which will be covered later. These can involve ransom demands as well as offers from psychics and private investigators. Nothing wrong with having a PI. But vet your PIs and make sure they have impeccable credentials. Report any suspicious or harassing behavior to your case investigator. Do not respond or provide any information until law enforcement can verify the identity of the sender and the validity of the message. Continue to ask questions. Continue to use your resources and seek more if needed. Chapter 7 of this guide contains a list of organizations with which you can connect. Also, never hesitate to ask your law enforcement agency and NCMEC for additional support. We are going to stop here for today, and while I run our list of cases that we are following from National Center for Missing and Exploited Children, I'm going to tell you that there will be a Part B and possibly a Part C, as well as I will be re-recording Section 1. These sections are taking a lot of time to record, and I have had to stop in this section, Section 2, to get a drink of water, to catch my breath, and because my recording software does not handle the audio part that goes over 17 or 18 minutes, it's why I try and keep everything I do to 15 minutes or less. So stay tuned for part B of section two, where we will talk about private detectives. And there might be a part C, I'll have to see how many minutes I actually have in the last two sections. Thanks so much for joining me. God bless you. And I will see you real soon with Section 2, Part B.